So if you're trying this out, I want you to try to send yourself a regular message, send yourself a priority message, and then try to send CloudBart a regular message and try to send me a priority message as well. Hey friends, CloudBart here. If you've been following the AWS community at all over the last few years here, one of the biggest impacts that has happened recently is the serverless application and serverless offering models from Amazon Web Services. Keep in mind, friends, when we say serverless, what we're talking about is really uh, taking and refining the cloud computing value proposition even further, all the way evolving it out to possibly one of the most important apexes so far. The point being, in the cloud, one of the biggest value propositions is having the service provider manage and deliver those services for us. This takes a whole lot of weight off of Cloud Bart's shoulders and it means that I can still get uh, high levels of service, functionality, innovative tools without necessarily having to work as hard or manage as much of the infrastructure myself. In fact, as you'll see, um, as I kind of go through my little uh, API, my serverless API that we're gonna be checking out here, a ton of functionality is possible here. I've only implemented a small portion of it uh, but keep in mind that Amazon is doing all of this management work for me in the background, and that basically puts me in the role of being just an integrator. I simply need to know how to use the services to connect them together, and there's a few specific little pieces of attribute data that we need to kind of work with. Now, like I mentioned, what I've laid out in my little serverless API is pretty simple. I wanted to create a message relay system that would allow students and learners to interact with an API that I built and get some basic feedback uh, from it. Because let's face it, when we talk about modern automation, uh, you look at the Cisco world and of course everything in the cloud, all of these things are driven by APIs. And so being comfortable with an API, how to work with it, pass information back and forth across the API, gonna be a really important skill for us all across the cloud computing space. And that means basically all across the technology space as well. And so uh, about a week ago, uh, as I was designing some content for CBT Nuggets, I was like, wouldn't it be cool if I could open some of this up to the larger public community out there? my friends on Twitter and on LinkedIn and on YouTube as well. So that's exactly what I did. And I wanted to say real quick, thanks for everybody who gave a response back. This video is directly for you. <laughs> and of course, for anybody who wasn't able to participate in it, I wanted to make sure you kind of understood what we worked on and some of the fun that we had with it. So let's jump into taking a look at the basic uh, architecture that I've built. Keep in mind, friends, I'm not gonna go over every single component. I just wanna show you what the basic architecture is. I've covered a lot more of it in full detail in my CBT Nuggets courses. So kind of starting off, um, the goal is to offer an API. So we'll start out here on <laughs> the internet facing side where I will be provisioning an, an API using the AWS API gateway service. This is where my users will be submitting their messages. Now, in particular, I've set mine up so that you were gonna submit a post to the API. And then there are really just one or two values that you might need to provide as a part of it. There's gonna be a potential subject you could provide. There would be the message body for the message itself. And then there is another field that we're gonna require called the sender ID. And this is the one that allows um, my different students and my different participants to only interact with their own personal email addresses. I didn't really want everybody to be able to spam everybody who's uh, participating in the lab here. And once you see kind of how I set the tools up here, you'll see why that was potentially possible. So as we prepare our requests to send into the API, we need to know where we are sending the messages. So I will provide all of my participants with an endpoint. Uh, that's kind of the DNS portion of it that gets us over to the API gateway service. And then after that, people will need to designate by providing um, this end prefix uh, slash messages or slash priority to designate which part of the API they wanna interact with. This is a classic hallmark in most modern APIs. And in my case, it does indicate that I'm using a RESTful, a representational state transfer style API here, where the URI drives part of the functionality. This is not always the case. There are many types of APIs that have come and gone over the years. So always keep in mind here, friends, that we're talking about uh, specifically a RESTful API that I've built in this example. So by relaying it to messages or priority, you're gonna trigger two different types of functionality. If you send it to messages, then you'll have the ability to designate the subject. And you heard me mention that just a minute ago. You'll also have to provide the sender ID as well. Now, if you send it to the priority system, then I am gonna put in a static subject for us and you'll still need to provide the sender ID as well. So just a couple of little implementation slight differences here. Now, in order to send that sender ID, friends, that is going to be a header value that you're gonna provide in. When I get into doing my example here in Postman in just a few minutes, I'll show you how to set that up. What I wanted to make sure too, though, is that if I have people who are a little more senior, a little more comfortable with the APIs, I wanted to make sure that they had a chance to try this out 
without me completely explaining it to them. And so for any of my advanced users out there, I've already sent you the instructions for how to interact with the API. You should have the uh, endpoint. You'll know that it's slash messages and slash priority. And then you also need to make sure that you provide in the appropriate sender ID for the header value itself. So I'm gonna let you guys try to tackle that. If you don't wanna see the complete reveal here, make sure you pause before I jump completely into it. Okay, cool. So more on that here in just a sec as we get Postman fired up and start trying to actually uh, demonstrate some of how this is gonna work. The other part that I built in the background, just to kind of show you how powerful <laughs> the serverless integration options are within AWS, is that the API gateway can be what's called a service proxy. It's one of the more interesting offerings from the gateway. Basically, it allows you to put an API in front of the other AWS APIs that are in the background. <laughs> That's right, I feel like there's an exhibit joke in here somewhere. Yo dog, I heard you liked APIs, so I put an API in front of your API. <laughs> Anyways, so what we're gonna have to do, uh, the API, oops, let me switch colors here. The API is gonna be sending messages in to the notification service for us, an SNS topic. On that topic, I've subscribed all of the participants of my lab notification system. I have all their email addresses listed in there. And on top of that, I also have two separate queues that are set up there as well. I have a regular message queue, and that's from the queuing service, and then I have a high priority queue. So there's actually two different things that are gonna happen. Well, I guess multiple different things that will happen in the background. The first one is that we will be able to send an email using this particular message relay system. So it'll send an email to the person uh, who sent in the message, as long as you provide the correct sender ID. After that, it's gonna put it into the messages queue. And then there will also be, if you send a priority message, then it would go into the priority queue as well. And I'm just gonna color code these. Keep in mind that messages and priority, both of those are SQS queues that I've built in the background. Now, this was kind of part of a larger lesson that I set up previously for a CBT Nuggets lesson where I was doing the service to service relay of uh, SNS to SQS. So again, friends, I'm only kind of showing you the API part of this. If you wanna get into the full details of everything that I built here, make sure you check out my lessons over there at CBT Nuggets. It's one of the fun things that I try to do with my training is really try to create some interesting functionality that you can recreate because let's face it, it's fun to read, it's fun to watch videos and do all of those things, uh, but actually building these solutions out is really what's exciting for me as a trainer, and I think it's really exciting for his learners uh, as well. So once you get those messages delivered in there, that's kind of the end of the test there. Uh, for all of my folks who are trying this out at home, you should be receiving emails as long as you get your sender ID properly populated in there. Keep in mind too that I've set this up to accept almost any messages that aren't missing the sender ID. So as long as you put an ID in there, it'll accept the message. But if the sender ID isn't correct, then it's probably gonna reject the message and you're not gonna get that email. So the email is your indicator that you got everything correct. <laughs> and there's one other extra one in here. I actually put together a special sender ID just so that you can deliver a message to me as well. And so if you put in a sender ID, which matches CloudBart, so if you just put in CloudBart as the sender ID, that will relay a message directly to me please do send me a message and make sure that you put it in the body of your message. Just something cool, something funny. Uh, I would like to try to come back and use some of this footage about uh, people testing it and interacting with it just to kind of close out my training lesson and also kind of bring all of you folks in and get you engaged in an actual training experience as well. But once again, just wanna say thanks for your participation. So now that we've talked a little bit about what the plan looks like, let's dig into the API gateway a little bit here. I just wanna show you some of the basic components of how I put together uh, the request and response pieces in the background. And then we'll go ahead and walk through the actual Postman testing example. And hopefully while you're doing this, you can be trying it out with your own sample data. If you haven't had a chance or you didn't get to participate in it, keep in mind that you can kind of watch through here and see how the demos look. And if you wanna check out how I built it all from scratch, again, take a look at it in the training content over at CBT Nuggets. Over here in the API Gateway console, I am taking a look at my CloudBart Events API, and you can see that I have two different resources configured here. Now in the API world, the parlance is that a resource is basically part of the URI uh, that you make the request to, and it indicates that you wanna reach some specific type of functionality. So the message resource offers one specific method. That's the post. This is why I was telling you you're gonna need to provide a post. And then in that post, we can configure the request process. So how do we handle the request and deliver it to the notification service? And you can see over here, SNS receives it. And then we can configure the response that it sends back out. Now this is really, really powerful stuff here, friends. We can take and manipulate and map and even stuff additional information into either the request going 
to the notification service or modify the output that comes back out, which is gonna go back to the original client. And so if we take a look in the method request here, you can see that I am specifically accepting two different headers. You're gonna send me my sender ID, and then you can also provide me the subject. And then over here in the integration request, this is the part where we prepare what you sent for uh, delivery to the notification service. And if we scroll on down in here, uh, I am passing in properties to the notification service using a query string parameter. So what that does is it allows me to control what the instructions are that are sent into the notification service. So a couple of key values that I have to designate here. I have to put in the topic that I want to have them delivered to. In fact, I need to update that there. <laughs> that should say lab notifications now. Cool. And notice the action in here. This is published, so that will allow me to publish a new message to the notification service. After that, I have the message and the subject, both of which I'm getting from the original request that you sent me. So I'm gonna grab this header, the subject header, and then I'm gonna grab the body from the message that was sent as well. And then finally, the last piece to consider then is how are we gonna get the sender ID distributed as well? Well, in order to do that, we have to set up a message attributes entry. And in this case, I'm looking for sender ID will be the name that I'll be passing on. And then I am gonna program in the data type as a string, and then the actual value will come from that sender ID header that we looked at earlier. Now keep in mind, friends, like I said before, I'm not going over the complete exhaustive build out here. Just wanted to show you how the request mapping works and then that response that gets back out. Moving back up to the execution plan, if we take a look at the integration response, you can see that I've stuffed uh, a little friendly message in here so that you can kind of get a confirmation. So you should get this message back from me. It says, oh, message received. Thank you for using my notification system. Okay, and this is a body that'll come back in the, uh, in the response. If we move over to the priority and its post, you can see in the method request, I'm not accepting the subject here because I'm gonna statically set that, but I still set the sender ID. And then in the integration request, uh, I do a little bit more work than what I did in the uh, regular messages queue. Keep in mind your friends, lots of possibilities. I'm talking about uh, one scenario that I created, but you can see that they support creating path parameters. Uh, URI parameters, and you can even create more advanced HTTP headers, and they even offer mapping templates. So there's wildly complex options that we can get into beyond uh, just the basic examples that I've provided here. Now, since I just made a quick change to those, I am gonna go ahead and redeploy the API. Deploying the API is the process of actually pushing all of this workspace code out to the endpoints themselves so that they can handle those requests. Cool. So now that I've got that deployed, I can grab the invoke URL up here. And for all of the folks that were participating, I have sent you this URL directly. I'm not sharing it directly here in the video. Uh, you would have had to participate to get it. But the principle is the same. You can still go up here and grab that URL. So I'm gonna grab a copy of that. I also wanted to point out too, friends, uh, that when you're working with the API Gateway, it does have CloudWatch logs integration built in. So I do have that turned on and I have it set to error. So that if there are problems, I can go and look in the CloudWatch logs and kind of see uh, what went wrong, uh, who threw up where <laughs> and what the problem was. Okay, fantastic. So now that we've took a quick look at the API itself, I wanted to jump into using Postman to actually test it out. Now, many of you have probably already seen enough here to be able to do this. Uh, if you're familiar with Postman, it is a generally available tool out there. There are some pay options for it. Um, in my case, I'm just using the open source community version of it, and it's gonna work fine for testing this out. I would encourage you try Postman. Keep in mind, there's lots of ways to submit API calls. So if you wanna use curl, or if you wanna use some other API submission tool, that's fine with me. Just make sure that you experiment out with getting those uh, header values submitted properly. So I'm over here in Postman now, and I'm gonna go ahead and start by setting up a new request. Okay, and I'll just call this my messages request here. We'll do a, the regular one. And let me see, I'll put it in my lab notifications collection. Now, the first thing in Postman is that I need to set the HTTP method. This is gonna be a post that I'm gonna submit and then I need to put in the URL that I wanna send the request to. So I'm gonna go paste in the URL I grabbed from the API earlier. Notice it ends in slash prod. Okay, make sure you keep that on there. And then at the end, you're gonna put slash messages, slash message. Okay, so that indicates that we wanna to talk to the message resource when we send this post in. Looking pretty good. 
Let's set up the actual headers now. If we jump over to headers, the first one that I can provide here is the subject. And I tried to keep the key names all lowercase, so be careful there, friends. For the subject, I'm gonna call this my Postman test subject line here so that we know uh, where it came from. And then next down, I wanna add another key. This one's gonna be my sender ID. And then in the value here, I'm gonna put in CloudBart because I want it to come directly to me. Keep in mind, friends, if you're following along and I gave you instructions on this, you would wanna put in your sender ID here in order to get the messages back to yourself. Uh, you can use CloudBart, of course, to submit messages to me. So keep that in mind and try it out. Great, so the headers look good. I'm gonna jump over to the body and provide a raw text body here. See how it's in text? Okay, and I'll call this my postman regular message body example, just so that we know that it came from my postman sample that I'm testing right now. Cool, so just to be clear here, I set the post, I put in the URL and added the resource at the end slash message. I've added the headers that I need for the regular message relay and I've also included a raw text body for our little test. So let's try it out. Up here on the top, I can click send. Great, there it goes. So I got my response back. It says standard message request received. Thank you for using the CloudBart notification system. And over here in my inbox, lo and behold, there we go. Ooh, Postman test subject line, that looks good. And here's my regular message body example, just like I provided. Looking pretty good. Over here in the queuing dashboard, if we give it a refresh, we should see a message in our regular queue. Oh yeah, there we go. Look at that, one more in there. And if we take a look at the details of that message, great, there is the subject and the message that we provided. And then down in here, you can see the sender ID that I provided their value was CloudBart. Cool, looking good. So now that we got the regular message working, let's try the high priority queued messages. Back over here in Postman, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this Duplicate this one, yeah, there we go. And just give it a rename, we'll call this priority. Great. What I'm gonna do is change the uh, URL here. It should not be slash message, it should be slash priority to use the other resource here. That looks good. The headers are slightly different as well. I don't need the subject anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that one. I'll keep the sender ID set to CloudBart. For the body, let's go ahead and say postman priority message. Great, priority message example. And that looks pretty good. We got the header, we got the body, we got the URL updated. Let's save that and then we'll go ahead and send it. Cool, there's my response. It says priority message received. That is a unique response from the priority resource itself. So that looks pretty good so far. Back over here in my inbox, there's my CloudBart priority message. And boom, just like we said, there's the message body that we provided. This is the static subject line that I forced onto the message. And back over here in the queuing service, if we give it a quick refresh, ah, da, 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 there we go, look at that. <laughs> One more message in the priority queue. Uh, and the regular queue gets a copy of every single message. So that looks pretty good. If we take a look at the high priority message that's in the high priority queue, you can see it has some additional info. There's the subject, there's the message. And then down here are all of the message attributes that we defined, the sender ID and then that static priority value that I had the API gateway add for us. So this worked exactly as desired. Fantastic friends. So that was the API gateway delivering messages to the notification service, which delivered messages to the queues and also our email subscriptions as well. We use subscription filters to ensure that only messages for the original sender ID, the correct sender ID, get delivered to the right recipients. So if you're trying this out, I want you to try to send yourself a regular message, send yourself a priority message, and then try to send CloudBart a regular message and try to send me a priority message as well. I don't mind, my inbox is ready for it and I set all of my billing controls up, <laughs> trying to ensure that nothing gets too crazy out there. So just to kind of recap here, friends, this was an opportunity for us to see some of the power of the serverless integration options within AWS. All of the things that I showed you here, I wrote nary a piece of code anywhere in there. In fact, not much more than just a few little single field values like I showed you in Postman. That's all it took for me to build all of those components out. And the cool thing about this, friends, is that now I have um, an example component tree here that can be applied across thousands of different examples. The API gateway service proxy functionality is not limited to just the notification service. It has a huge list of services that you can front end with it. And similarly, 
the notification service can send messages to a bunch of other services for you as well. And so in the end, friends, these three different tools are some of the most important and powerful serverless connectivity components within the AWS toolkit. And I hope you enjoyed checking them out. For me, I'm gonna keep this little guy handy and we'll have it up for the next couple of weeks. And I will be showing you and going over the final results of having all of my friends participate and test with it in one of my CBT Nuggets videos, which I'll also be sure to kind of include for everybody else out there as well. So keep in touch, friends. Hit me up if you have questions, if you have ideas or you wanna collaborate in some way. I love to do things like that as well. Follow me on Twitter out there at CloudBart and make sure you subscribe and like this video, share it with your friends as well. Really appreciate your time, friends. And as I say, we'll see you in the cloud. <laughs>